everybody. This is Pam at the Paper Outpost, and today we are finishing the um, part two of taking a junk journal that was half completed or actually redesigning it. There was, it was a one signature junk journal, and with 20 pages, we are adding two more signatures, squeezing them in to this junk journal, and this junk journal has a, it's either a chipboard or a file folder cover, something a little bit stiff in here, but it's not a book cover and it's not hard. It's somewhat like this yeah it's fabric cover and just how to do that to see if to see if I can do that so I got the back in now we got to place the front I'm not finished sewing something in here the back I'm not finished sewing the back in okay that's where we stopped just a, a brief um, remind yes that is sunny there's a squirrel at the backyard okay sun bun um, big uh, full-scale squirrel alert uh, I do have a mega Christmas, no, mega bonus Christmas fundle bundle going on right now with every purchase of a bundle, which is a collection of old and interesting papers, antique um, ledger, checks, receipts, postcards, black and white photos, all sorts of fun things that you can use in your junk journal. Um, you're going to get 25 plus extra bonus pieces. And in here, there's a very special page from 1833 included in your package. It's 190 years old, if I did my math right. And it has beautiful Gothic German text on it. So it's really a cool piece. Um, so if you've never felt a book that old or a page that old, you now can and add that to your collection. So it's kind of a neat thing if you're a historical buff or a collector. And you're going to get some very neat pieces in there. Some is going to be Christmas ephemera, and some is going to be um, regular ephemera. And um, once they are gone, they're gone, and we go from here. Okay, so we're back. All right. So now I got it half sewn in the back one. That's where we were at. This this is the newbie. I was apparently coming up from the bottom. I have a piece of sari silk combined with a piece of waxed linen thread. I think it's waxed linen thread. Let me see. This stuff. Okay, and um, it, that, in case the sari silk breaks, this is going to be the, the strength thing in here because sometimes sari silk is a little bit weak, but it, it gives a nice pretty effect, so we're going for it anyway. So, we're just finishing by going through the center, and this is the hard wiggly part. Coming through the back, coming through the center hole, trying not to um, pierce the sari silk that's already there, but make our own unique little hole. We might have to make it a little bigger, and we could have gone with the bigger hole on the crop it out too big but that would be the 3 16th as opposed to the 1 8th I normally do the 1 8th for regular paper um, regular nouts of paper and regular thicknesses of stuff but I forgot and I've got the small hole here so I'm kind of creating a bigger hole to get it through and if this doesn't come through on its own which that is really packed in there then we have our ways we have our ways to get that needle through and this does make it a lot easier so I'm almost through don't want to tear it or do anything eat harsh or it's a little okay let me do the roundy roux this helps this helps kind of massage it a little bit make the hole a little bigger by doing that and then eventually one day before christmas this guy is going to come through yeah this is called the way it really is no editing raw yeah what really happens in the craft room am i going did i thread that that's my biggest concern did i accidentally and I think I see a thread. So that means I accidentally pierced the sari silk from the first run pass through. And I'm going to go in here. There's just like a thread or two. And I think I need to free it because I can't pull all that bulk through that. Sunny, get the squirrel. Get the Oh, I saw two coyotes this morning in the backyard. Yeah. So Sunny does not go out in the back unattended. A mother is always there. We don't go in the backyard at all, actually. We just, we're inside the screen lanai. Okay, let's just say that. But, yeah, those coyotes, they can, they can, they like little puppies, so we don't, we don't let them even have a chance. No, we are vigilant and on it. Okay, here we go. Oh, almost through. I can see the eye of the needle. It is not far. This is like, uh, this is more exciting than pimple popper, isn't it? Like, is it going to come out? Is it going to come out? Okay, it's not more exciting than pimple popper, but okay, I'm almost there. Did I, did I, is it a piercing issue? Is that what it is? Maybe I need to get in there and free it a little bit more. I could, that could be the problem. All right, the other thing is if we can't get the, the pull through going, oh, maybe get no. okay, maybe we need a bigger push through from this side. Let's go see what's going on here. There's like mayhem going on back here. So it is in the back. 
Okay, that should be going in. We're going to take we're going to take the end of this pen because it's here. And we're going to see what's going on. We're going to give it a little shove through. So one, yep, everything should go through. Go through. Okay, this is really watching Pam suffer here. Okay. See, this is what happens. Okay. And if it doesn't work, maybe I'm just going to have to go and punch, take the signature out and punch a bigger hole. It may come down to that. I have a funny feeling I thread, I got, did I? I don't see any. Let's make sure I do a little surgery here and make sure I don't have it stuck. Okay, we're going to try again. Here we go. With the mighty force of a thousand crafters, she... Oh, yeah, baby, we're through. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And that's how easy crafting is. That's right. There's no muss, no fuss. Everything goes smoothly every time I sit down. Let me tell you, it's so, it's so easy, it's ridiculous. Okay, we see the real world. Real world state of affairs here. What really goes on behind these scenes. Okay, everything is appropriate there. Whoop. And everything is appropriate there. Okay, so we're going to make sure that our little angel wings are under the bridge. We're going to pull tight, but not tearing. Okay, we can take the needle off. It doesn't need to be there. Wait a minute. Is that right? Yes, this is right. Now we're going to go left over right. It is a bit of a bulky knot, right over left. But since it's primarily a writing journal, we're not going to really worry about it too much. Because, you know... There's lots of paper in here. It'll be just fine. It'll be just fine. Okay. So we go down here. Get rid of fuzz balls. And maybe trim you up. I'm going to trim these, all these other little extra ones up. Okay, is everybody good? Everybody's good. Okay, so I can take this off now. Now I'm going to arrange it so it's straight before I train the paper. So it's kind of sitting a little bit like that. Smaller here, wider here. But is it, it is actually positioned in the correct position as far as positions go. And um, get rid of that little fluff ball. It looks like a hole, but it's not. No. I have the extra hole here, not down here. Okay. Which I don't think you'll be able to see at the end. So there, I just arranged it where it should be. And I'm going to search for my bone. Up oh, there it is, my backup bone folder. My regular one is here somewhere, but I, I, I can't find it because it's here somewhere. Okay. I'm going to train the paper so that the book lays flat. And, it, and you can come and do it this way too, which is not a bad idea. There we go. There we go. And yeah, yeah. So we got two signatures in. We're going to go for one more. We're getting a little, oh, fuzzball. We're getting a little closer to the edge of the book, but we still have wiggle room because I apparently made a wider book. It's wider than my pages. And I can always turn these down after the fact if need be. Okay, so. Yes, the squirrel is still present. Okay, so we do have the holes already in here. We have identified top front. See how handy that is to know that when you've walked away from a craft project and now all of a sudden you're back. Okay, I have to show you this picture because it's just catching my eye. This is the coolest picture ever. Um, I found it in my black and white photo stash. It's like the entrance to some mine or something like that. Isn't that cool? I think those are the lights in the mine, some kind of piping, maybe for fresh air, I don't know, electrical conduits, I don't know, but isn't this cool? I just think it's really cool. Does anybody recognize that, like what kind of mine that would be? Seems to be, is that, those are some tracks of some sort? Maybe, I don't know, some kind of mine, as far as mines go. All right, so now we're going to place the front. Oh my Lord, did I lose my, I had pre-cut a piece Oh, hang on. I had pre-cut a piece of sari silk that was supposed to match. I can't find it. Let me go look for it. Hang on. I'll back up a little bit. Hang on. Ha-ha! She found it. Okay, so just getting the end of my waxed thread. Pairing it with my sari silk, S-A-R-I. So, uh, torn from saris from India. And reused, repurposed. Very cool. One. Two. Three. No, I don't make those. I buy those. Um, eBay, Amazon, you can get them on now. I have some links in my Amazon shop, but you can find them on Etsy everywhere right now. And they're really cool. Some are <coughs> Sanus Bunnis. <laughs> it's a full scale alert. Um, there you go. Um, who moved the needle? There it is. I knew it didn't go far. I had full faith we were going to find it together. Yeah, there it is, right there. The dude, I, like, I know if my butt doesn't move, and well, okay, it did move briefly there, but if it generally doesn't move, some, everything should be here somewhere, 
right? That's the philosophy. Okay, so you run your fingers along this to make sure there's no extraneous fluff balls because those can jam the, the system. So you want as free flowing, free of fluff balls and no knots. No, don't pick a piece that has knots because sometimes they knot them together to add the next piece. So no knots, no knot, get a piece with no knots. Your, your life will be much easier. Okay, and we're all about keeping it easy around here, right? Okay, so. Um, front top, taking these off. We're ready to do that. Okay. Okay, there we go. I thought I punched the holes. Apparently not. Oh, okay, back it up. Going to punch the holes. So we're going to, what are you doing out of place? You need to get in place. Go over there more, and you can come this way. Okay, that's better. Make sure everybody's aligned and playing well. And I think I'm just going to clip these so that I can do the punching with the Crocodile 2 Big Bite, which apparently I didn't do. So back in action. I think this is a really cool stencil page, isn't it? That was done with leaves and nature. And so you don't have to buy expensive stencils. You have beautiful stencils all around you all the time. Um, and you can reuse the same leaves. So if you find some really cool leaves, Flatten them out, like wet them, flatten them out, put them between two tea towels and put some weight on them, let them dry, be nice and flatty flat for you. And then um, use them as stencils because it's, you know, nature is awesome to use as stencils. Why is this green one not behaving? What are you doing? Come, come, hi come hither. All right, I'm gonna move you. Is that the same page? Might not even be, yeah, I think it is. Okay, there we go. All right, let's just refold everybody. Everybody's getting all excited, settle down. Okay, kids, sit down in the back. Okay, here we go. Um, punch. That's the, yeah, we want to do the small one because we're staying uniform because we used the small hole puncher with the crocodile too big bite. And I'm looking from the side, not straight down on the puncher because it's easier to see if you're sitting and then you look sideways at the thing to see where the little puncher thing comes down right on the dot. You want to be right on the dot on the spine. Oh, did I do the wrong dot? <sighs> I'm now looking at this like I made pencil marks and something tells me I made pencil marks and I was supposed to go with the pencil marks and I just made the wrong hole. Huh. Yeah, I got a funny feeling. It was like that funny feeling, you know what I mean? All right, let's look at this and just see, this is how we test. See, this is what happens when you walk away mid-project. Okay, this is the top folding. I'm checking for alignment for my holes. No, yeah, see, it is the pencil marks. I put the holes in the wrong spot. So I'm going to learn a little lesson. And um, I think what I'm going to do is reinforce with a tiny little bit of washi tape. Not much, but just some. Because this girl needs a little reinforcement in life sometimes. Let's see, where is... this. Now obviously it won't repair all the holes all the way through, but it's going to mask my little faux pas on the on the outside page. So I'm going to take a piece of washi tape, put some good glue stick, and the one I like to use is Scotch Create glue stick. Not sponsored, just like the glue. And then I'm going to cover that first hole like 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 she never was. Okay there, there's no hole there. Who, who can say I did that? Nobody, except if they look at the inside. And I could actually hide the inside one too, so Maybe we'll do that. Nothing like a good cover-up, you know what I mean? I mean, it's the crafter's uh, way out of 90% of stuff. Okay, here we go. Cover. You can use that. It can be a contrasting color or a complementary color. But, uh, yep, this is how we get out of little circumstances like that. And one more. It's good to know these little tips and tricks because we took a while to figure them out, let me tell you. Okay, and that also gives that a little bit of strength. Okay, so let's flip this. I don't even, okay, so these are definitely all in the wrong spot. And here's another thing to note. Don't ever be surprised when you punch on the spine, in the back, exactly on the spine, that your holes magically don't come out on the spine inside. I don't really know why. I'm sure it has to do with paper movement and stuff like that, but it's a thing and it will not stop you. Do not let it stop you. It's going to be okay. It's most important that they're aligned on the spine in the back. It's just it's one of those things. I don't know. There's probably a scientific explanation for it. Nobody has supplied me with that rationale, but I'm going to now cover these. I'm going to keep them. I don't know where the, the paper pencil marks are. Why is this one north? 
Yeah, it's up higher, so I'll cover this lower um, so I don't run into punching the washi tape because that just might not be pleasant, we'll just say. Okay, so put that there. And I think it acts like a nice little decor for the center. It's got some, a little pizzazz, you know what I mean? There's like another, yes, yes, there's, what is there out there? Okay, did I tell you there were two coyotes? Yeah, I did. Now that's something to bark at. You're not going outside, Sonny. Don't even get a funny idea right now. You're not going out there with coyotes, that's for sure. Um, okay, so this one is below. So we stay high, closer to the top. Okay, there we go. Yeah, okay. Phew, that's the way out of that one. All right, let's just make sure everybody's prepared again. And now we're going to sit down and punch our holes in our signature, just as if this never happened. Like on all the other channels where it goes perfectly the first time, where they know how to edit. <laughs> Okay, um, all right, so pa pencil mark, pencil mark, pencil mark. That's what I'm headed for. One eighth inch punch hole, but if you're using the sari silk, you could use the bigger hole and your life probably would be a lot easier. And I would probably recommend that in this circumstance. So it does go by the thickness of what you're sewing through it. Most things are gonna be thin, most strings. So you can probably do the one eighth very comfortably for 99.9% .9 of your journals. There, that wasn't too bad. I mean, honestly, punching the holes is not a big deal. Okay, so there we go. We have our new holes. Oh, look at that. That's interesting. Well, you know, it is what it is. Um, but we're good to go. Yeah, I mean, life is grand again. Okay, so don't move. There is a needle here somewhere. Okay, here's the thread. Here's the sari silk. Here's this. We're going to line the tops. Why don't I put it somewhere where I can easily find it? Now you have to feel for it. This is where it's gone. Okay. I'll give myself one more second. If not, I'll just go get another needle. Apparently, I'm going to get another needle. Hold on. Never mind. As my, my butt was arising off the, the table, I see it with my no glasses eyes, which is pretty impressive for a morning. Okay, here we go. I'm going to thread that needle. Thread that needle. Sorry, silk and um, floss at the same time, or this is, uh, yeah, wax thread. Okay, I think what I'll do is I'll take it, thin it out, put this in the middle, fold it up like a little taco, so I have both, and then I'll try and thread both at the same time. And if not, I'll thread separately. And that's probably where I need the glasses. Why do you thwart yourself, sister? You should not say these things. You know that. I do know better. Okay, I think I'm in. Am I in? I think so. Oh, I think we're good. Okay, don't move. Just get it. Get it. Get it. Oh, we're good. We're good. Okay. There we go. That's the way it goes. Yeah. There's that little inherent struggle. We make our ends meet. We open it up. We have assessed top front. We have assessed top front. We're going in the middle. We're going in the middle hole in the front. Okay, we're through. We haven't pierced. Oh, we did. We pierced lightly one thread. We'll break it because that's easier. And then we'll pull through. Okay. Here we go with this again. All right, so we can get this through here. Let's pull all this out of the way. It's easier coming this way because you don't have to deal with this fluffy stuff going accidentally pulled through. Let me get my jaws of mightiness here. Okay, no, that wasn't bad at all. It's actually not as bad this time. Okay, pulling it through, leaving like a four inch tail, six inch tail, something like that. Go north, find the hole. You can lift it up so you can see it. You can sometimes see it better looking on the inside, finding out general location. Now you found it. Now go through the top. I'm going to do the same thing here. We have this. We're going to make sure that none of that has interacted with any of the other stuff back there. And I think this is going to come through pretty easily. Oh yeah, now we're talking. See, this is, this is the way it should go on camera. Like, oh yeah, we're just crafting along. It's all going so well and so smoothly. That's what happens. Okay. Oop, keep going until we are there. Okay, now I have... Created tightness. Okay, that's what we want. Now, well, let me get all rambunctious on me here. Let me get oriented. You know, where are you going? Gonna go through the bottom hole. Through the bottom hole. Okay. And then through the, the cover in the back. Through the back. Turn it over. Let everybody nestle. Oh, look at it. I don't even need the jaws of life to get this out of here. That's pretty cool. Snug, but not tearing. Going in the same hole. This is the trickiest one because there's so much action going on in here. Okay. We have the cover. Are we through? Oh, we are through. Now we're going to go for the hole. Oh, I'll drop the whole thing. Okay, we start again. And we're going through the cover. Are we through? Oh, nope. Going through the cover. 
one of those days. Going through the cover? Hole. Go through the hole. There we are. We're through. Okay, now back it up. Look for where the hole is. I can see it. Can you see it? Going in there. Go in there. Oh, I'm out. Back in. There we are. Sometimes you have to pull it apart a little bit so you can see direction. Oh, there, there I am. And I, I don't think I have threaded anything. It should be an easy pull through. Let's see if I can do it by the hand. Probably not. Ah, nope, okay. Jaws of life. Oop, almost. Okay, and we're through. Oh, that really wasn't bad. No, I can, I, there have been worse days. Yes. So now we want to, where's the, oh, what are we missing? Where's the brown thread? Did we lose the brown thread? <gasps> you didn't go through? What? Well, or is it you? You didn't go through. What are you doing up there? You should not be up there. You're the front too. You are the one that goes in there. Why are you at the top? Down to top, bottom, wait, middle, bottom, top, right? Is that the order I went? Now I don't know. Okay, this is loose, so let me pull that tight. Let's just pull this tight. Okay, we're taking up that slack. We're gonna have to go in there and get that guy. Yeah, he came off. Okay, so now you get to see what really happens. Turn it over. Is it you? No, you look like you're embedded in these first two. It's you. Yeah, you need to be re-thread and re-strung through the hole. Okay, so I, I have no idea how that happened, but it did, and we're going to fix it. Okay. Okay, whoops. That was a lot. Make sure I didn't lose the other two. No, it's still there. Okay, so now we are going to go through the middle hole again. Hopefully without accidentally threading any of this other stuff. Okay, I'm not sure I'm in... Avoiding the other stuff, but this is thin, so it might go through the other stuff more easily. I, I am through. Here I am. Oh, look at that. Now all is well. Now we have um, a pinky and a brownie on, for either side. We're going to put one on either side. Hopefully they're the right sides. I don't know if there's a right side. Um, snug. And maybe do them separately. Snug but not tearing. Oh, look at that. Yeah, see, that's why you want to do them separately. Snug but not tearing. This is a little cockeyed. This one is a little longer, but with all the fuss, I have enough to tie the knot, so I'm just going to tie the knot, and then I'll trim the excess, because we're just looking for the easy way out. Can we say that? Okay, right over left, left over right. Everything should come out nice and tight. Let's see. Okay. All right, there we go. Okay, there we go. Okay. All right. Ta-da! Okay, so I think I can take that off. I can take that off. We pull these down. We know that's top. The top. I'm just going to leave that there just for now so I can keep it oriented. Pull these down so they live down there. And now I'm going to train the paper. We can take this off because it's in its home. Everything's looking good here. Doesn't look like Sally Sue came by and punched a bunch of wrong holes, even though she did. But there's always a way to cover something up with crafting. And um, there. So let's see how fat it is now. Oh, you little chubberoo. Look at you. I love the feel of this journal. This is actually a substantial journal with tons of pages. I could probably even this up a little bit just to give it a little bit more uniformity. Like maybe get rid of some of that big stuff. Let's do that. Um, what you want to do is make sure that all the sp signature spines line up. Force them all together. You don't want one advancing more than the other. Grab that in one big chunk. If you can, if you have a big bulldog clipper, you can just grab the whole enchilada like that. And the same thing from the bottom. Grab the whole enchilada. Now these, this cover is forgiving. It's going to allow me to put its wings back. I need to move this over, Mark. Okay, because I'm going to put a ruler in there and do a little trimming. Oh, I need to order a new, a new metal ruler. I keep forgetting, keep forgetting, because I took the other one upstairs. All right. Not this one. And I'm going to grab a craft knife, and I think it's time that I take this dull one off. I close my eyes, look away. Okay, I did that. And um, put that in the garbage safely, probably tape it. That would be better. I'll get to that later. <laughs> and, uh, um, okay, line. Make sure that you're 
you're using craft mats. Craft mats are handy. You know, I have to admit, it is one of those things that I really do like having in the craft room, just because it keeps me a um, square. <laughs> keeps me square. When being square is a good thing, this is it. All right, so and I'm going to go lightly because these are like thin little edges I'm doing, but I think we're going to get a nicer finish here. And I can always rough it up with a little bit of sanding sponge or sanding block to give it that softy paper feel. Um, like an old book, you know, sometimes they have those really so cool, soft pages. Now, if you find like you're running into this, make it longer. That will help. That's something that took me a hundred years to figure out. Sometimes your um, craft knife is not extended far enough and you're, ru you're actually running into the, the, the ruler or your book and it's causing mayhem. And we're all about minimizing mayhem. Yep, we are. How'd that go? Okay, so this is the way it went. Retracting, that's always good. Okay, it's not bad. A little there, but not bad. So, okay, that's definitely more flush, right? And we still actually have a lot of room. Mesh, we could have put even more signatures in, but I think three times three, so you multiply 20 pages times four, that's gonna give you 80 pages per front and back per signature. And then I have three of those. So 80 times three is what, 20, 240 pages just in this one journal, which is a relative chubber. Now it's, it's very packed with paper. So I would say this would lend itself more to a writing journal just because it's so packed with paper. But you could totally do some decorating in here with rubber stamps and stickers and stuff like that if you want to do that. But this has a really good feel for a writing journal. I don't know. It just really does. I love it. And you could, you could clip things onto pages that can be easily removed. So if somebody wants to keep it as a writing journal, they can do that. But what I think I will do is uh, I may do a binding out of the same sari silk. And... Uh, Maybe I'll do a very simple, simple closure. Um, this is the front. I have to tell myself that periodically. This is the front because I know that. And I'm going to use my, yes again, favorite tool known as the Crocodile Dew Pig Bite. And it, I'm going to go for, what am I going to go for? I need a, um, I need, uh, I need, where are you? I need an eyelet. There you are. Okay, let's give a, let's give a big one. Okay. So in my mind, I think this is a 3 16th. It looks like a big one to me. So first of all, I'm going to cut the hole of 3 16th -ness. So that's going to be all the way to the right. Boom. That's the big one. There's, can you see it? There it is. There's the big one. That's what I'm going to punch with. Don't lose the eyelid, Pam. I'm going to do it far enough in, so if, like, look where your chomper is, and then decide where you want your hole. I would say here. And it goes through uh, fabric and stuff pretty easily. I'm going to place the eyelet face down as if it's living in the hole. Is that the right size? Please be to God. Um, why is there stuff in there? Okay, that needs to be cleared. We need to clear the eyelet. Clear the eyelet hole. Somebody come in here and get that stuff out of there. Okay. All right. All right. Now we're going in. We're placing the eyelet. All right. It's been surgically, it hasn't been surgically placed, but it's good. Okay. And now we're going to use the same tool. We're going to go to this front thingy, weird thing. And uh, we're going to advance this thinger all the way to the front. That's the eyelet cramp crimper. And you want the chubby nipple on top, the silver one, and the flying saucer silver disc on the bottom because those are the ones I love and I really don't like using the others because they confuse me. Um, and this one seems to work. Okay, let's hold our breath. Now you got to line it up well. Make sure you line it up at the right spot. Look for that little nipple to come right down there and then squeeze. And that should be it. It should be set. Okay, let's look on this side. Yep, it's in there. That's good. That'll work. So now we're going to just make sure we have a freeway. We do. We have a freeway. Okay, it's clear hole. Um, Okay, I'm going to use some of this stuff. Oop, that's too short. We don't want short pieces. Um, oh, this is going to take a minute here. Okay, get this all. Okay, 
All right, now it's okay. Well, it's not really okay if this has knots. We don't want knots because we're going to be going through the, the outlet. Let me test for tensile strength. It's, this one's not bad. Pretty good. Mm, not bad. Not bad. Not bad. Pretty good. Okay, so I think what we you can do this a couple ways. You can just thread that and tie a knot on the outside so it doesn't advance through, which I, I might do in the side. That'll give me more wrap around because I'll have it one thickness and then if the person fills it up it can expand to that so I think that's what I'm going to do you could also add um our old friend wax thread maybe we will just in case this I gotta know I you know, the sorry silk breaks let's just do it Pam it's been a theory with this one the whole way let's not drop the ball now you've come so far so far okay so I'm gonna take those and you could put them in the you could put them in the um needle again and thread it but I think I'm going to be able to get through here just by pure pure force I'm coming through with bow oh look at that it's totally easy okay so now I'm going to tie a knot and you can tie a little dangly thing on here that would be cute maybe we'll find something let me go look okay give myself a little tail to work with I guess I want to do a dangly thing that's probably going to be a big heifer of a knot I don't think that's going to go through oh no yeah, that's not going to go through there. Okay, so let me find a dangly thing. Okay, I didn't find a dangly... Well, this is a dangly thing. This is a thing we made with some paper beads that we made with some random beads and some uh, twine or, or uh, maybe that wax stuff. Yeah, I think so. Uh, but very cool, very fun. And I don't know, I'm getting this feeling like I might want that to dangle from there. Let me just try that. Um, okay. Might be a little long. We'll see. Let me, let me wrap it. Okay, let me... We've got too much stringage over here. Let me... Let, oh no, we don't want to, okay, we can't cut you. We can cut you. You, I don't think we're cutting. What is all this? Oh, it's just extra bow in the middle. That's what it is. Okay, let's get that all straightened out. There we go. Everybody's organized now. Okay. What's that? Oh, okay, there we go. There we go. That's better. Okay, so you have to go and like figure things out at the end. It happens. All right, so here we go back up a little bit so you can see the whole thing so we have this and we're going to use this to wrap around wrap around so it's a good binder would probably behoove us to have something on this end too i feel like me oh hang on let me find something okay i found this weird little piece of purple jewelry and i thought it might go nicely with this this uh project i'm just using these uh wire nippers on this plier to cut the sharp ends off and i'm left with that here's my tail Okay, so I am going to just use a random place to tie this on. Lay it down, tie it on. I think it's going to look cute. Um, it's the right color theme. It's very comfy in the hand. All that kind of stuff. Yeah. So you can do little finishing touches to your journals in any which way. So I'm going to let this decoration of the sash be the decoration on the finality of the outside. I don't think I'm going to put it. Maybe I'll... No, I, I don't know if, that, if it, We'll see. I haven't decided if I'm going to put something on the cover or not, but uh, but I, I like the soft mush of the fabric. And if I put a paper or something, I'm going to be, you know, it might not fold as nicely with that. So what's this? All right, that just needs, this just needs to leave the room. What is that? Oh, that is the thing. Oh yeah, I need to tie that on there, I think. Okay, no, that does not need to leave the room. We need to affix it to this thing. Okay, so we've got to tie a little knot. That's all we got to do is tie a little knot. Oh, this is, going to be, this is not going to be easy, but we're going to do it. Here we go. A little knot ski. Right over left. With the dexterity of an elephant. Left over right. And one more for good measure in case we did it wrong and that should lock it in. You can even put a little do glue daub there if you feel like, hey, I'd feel better about that. And there you go. So we have this. That'll come around again. Now here, you could do anything. Like you could you could clip these together because that has a little clippy. You'd have a double doodad. Or you could not use that as the clippy. But you could do the tuckaroonie, which is also effective. And you could tuck papers in the front if you wanted. Like let's say you just wanted to tuck something cute in there. It could still be decorative, but not adhered, which is a nice way for presentation as well. Maybe we'll put this really cool. Um, mine photo and I don't know, I just think it's cool I think it's really cool okay so we'll do that and uh, actually I think I'm going to thread this 
So it's over. I think I'm just going to hook it. Oh, maybe I'm just going to go around it. That's what I'm going to do. I'm gonna go, no, no, that's, that's not working. We're going back under. Yep, that's what we're going to do. Okay. And then we have that. So there you go. I hope you thought that was fun. I, I enjoyed making that. It was fun to rehabilitate it and uh, give it, breathe new life back into it and make a really cool journal out of it. So if you've got some old projects that are hanging around and you want to do fun stuff with them, don't be shy. What are you telling them, Sonny? Don't be shy. Don't be shy at all. This is Sunshine Cub Pup Reporter from the Paper Elbow Sing. Don't be shy. That's right. You just put on your big girl crafty pants or big boy crafty pants and craft on, people. Craft on. Sunshine out. Thank you. Um, and what are we doing about the coyotes? Nothing, because apparently we're not allowed outside when the coyotes are present. Actually, we're not allowed outside unattended ever. It's my life. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, you know, you, you're a precious cargo. So, all right, there you go, folks. I hope you had fun. Remember, I've got the mega bonus Christmas bundle, bundle, bundle special going on right now. It's in my Etsy shop. Um, if you don't know, I have a free monthly emailed newsletter. Sign up for that. You get a lot of cool freebies. I um, have videos. They come out Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays, 7 a.m. Eastern Time. My podcasts, which are audio, come out Tuesdays and Thursdays. And you can watch video podcasts on Spotify any old day of the week if you like to do that. I have an Etsy shop where I sell journals and bundles and kits and bundles and digikits and print and mail options. Check it out. There's a lot of fun things for you to explore there. It's just, uh, it's the Paper Outpost Etsy shop. And um, I have links down below. I have an Amazon. Amazon shop if you're looking for favorite tools and supplies. I do my best to put links in there. It is an affiliate link. It does help my shop, but you don't pay more for the items for using my shop links, but thank you very much for that. And um, I have a merchandise store where I, I uh, have the phrase create with reckless abla blandon or everything is a craft supply until proven otherwise and you can get that on a t-shirt a sweatshirt a zip hoodie a mug a tote or a water bottle great for gift giving especially this time of year and also you can find me on instagram pinterest twitter linkedin facebook facebook group come and join our facebook group it's called the paper outpost facebook group um just google that you'll find it and remember most of all that fun can be simple and create with reckless abandon everybody i'll see you next time